Welcome back. In our last segment, we concluded our discussion of Islamic philosophy and our discussion of Iman. And in this segment, we will begin our discussion of Islamic art, including reasons for lack of understanding of it in the West, its development as an aniconic art form, and the three central sacred arts. Before the mid-20th century, in the Western world, Islamic art was not considered as an independent category of art. Regional arts, such as Persian art or Mughal art of India, were well known, but an overarching category that linked arts of the Islamic world based on certain shared characteristics had not been established. This began to change quickly with the Festival of the World of Islam in 1976 in the UK that was inaugurated by the Queen and had a major impact on the art world. Also of major significance in changing the West's understanding of Islamic art was the pioneering work of Titus Burkhardt, particularly his book, Art of Islam, as well as Sayyid Hussein Nasser's Islamic Art and Spirituality. There was little understanding of Islamic art before that time in the West for two reasons. The first is that in the West, the principal art forms are painting and sculpture. Whereas in the world of Islamic art, painting is not that important, and sculpture as such does not exist. The second reason is that the modern West emphasizes the idea of fine arts, but such a category does not exist in Islam or other traditional civilizations. Most religious art is based on the painting or making of statuary of the founder or some aspect of the divinity. It is primarily iconic art. An icon is a sacred image. Images of Christ and the Virgin Mary are at the center of Christian art. The same thing applies to Buddhism, in which the beauty of the image of the Buddha is believed to save the devout viewer. In Hinduism, the central art is either the painting or statue of Krishna or Rama or Shiva. But Islam, like Judaism, did not have iconic art for theological reasons. Judaism and Islam are much more of a Semitic religion than is Christianity, which began as a Semitic religion but became Europeanized. The history of the sedentary Semitic peoples was one in which their ancient religions, such as the Babylonian, decayed due to their idolatry, their worship of images. Islam tried to avoid this danger from the very beginning by banning the image of the divinity. The Quran does not specifically forbid it, but there is a hadith of the Prophet in which he said angels do not visit houses in which there are graven images or idols. And so Islam developed an aniconic art. Islam did not forbid followers of other religions from having their icons. What it forbade was the idolatry of the Arabian Jahiliya religion. When the Prophet conquered Mecca, he went to the Kaaba and had all of the statues thrown out. So it is important to maintain a clear distinction between an icon and an idol. A hadith of the Prophet says, God is beautiful and he loves beauty. 